Christmas, St. Louis Family Church. gave us his word. God, I thank you. Thank you that you are faithful in everything. We rest in you this morning. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness. You have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you my help in time of need. Lord, I can't help but sing. Faithful you are. Faithful Says 
is our yes and amen. Beautiful Savior, you have brought me here. You pulled me from the ashes. You have broken every curse. Blessed Redeemer, you have set this captive free. Lord, I can't help but sing. Faithful you are. Yeah. 
Father God, thank you for this awesome day. Thank you that we can connect with you and that you're real. We can come to you because of Jesus and because of what, what he did for us to bridge that gap to you. Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace and you are the Lord of Lords and we lift you up. We pray that today be a great day where we get something from you. We ask that the Holy Spirit speak to our hearts as we hear the word today. We give you this day and we give you all of our will and effort and love. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to St. Louis Family Church, everybody. Happy Sunday morning. Go ahead and greet the people around you and have a seat. My name's Joe Kowalik. I'm on staff here. I am honored to be able to be your MC this morning. Again, thanks for coming. If you're on the live stream, welcome. It's good to have you guys too. Pastor Jeff and Patsy are out of town today. So we have a great guest speaker. We are in really good hands. Pastor Paul Chase from the Philippines is here today. He was here Friday night. Uh, he did a great job, spoke on um, revelation and how that led and laid the foundation for relationships. And so you can listen to that sermon on the YouTube channel. It's really great. So you can listen to it and then chew on it and think about it. Or if you were here on Friday night, you can play it again and let it sink in. So he's got a good word this morning. I was here for the 8 o'clock and it was really good. So also on Friday night, I, I told this to the last service too. I did a... I laid out some really bad Christmas jokes. <laughs> and I told the last service, I promise that I won't tell any bad Christmas jokes. Only good Christmas jokes. <laughs> of course they're different ones. <laughs> What's the best Christmas gift? Well, you can't say Jesus. <laughs> Should I just scratch that joke entirely because of that answer? I mean, yes, Jesus is the best Christmas gift, but I was going to say a drum. No, you just can't be. <laughs> the punchline is you just can't beat it. There we go. Why can't penguins fly? They're too short to be pilots. I think that one joke is probably the max that I should do. So that's enough of that. That was my segue to talk about Christmas next week. So Christmas is next week. It's a week from today, if you didn't know that. Stores are still open for some shopping. But what we've got on Sunday morning, there's going to be one service. There's no 8 o'clock service, and there's no 11.15 service. This is the service to go to. So you guys don't even need to know that. You just keep coming like normal. And there is no prayer meeting on Sunday night, that night, and then we're going to do that pattern again for New Year's Day. So since New Year's Day is on a Sunday, we're just going to do one service. But we do have a prayer meeting on New Year's Eve. If you've never gone to a New Year's Eve service, then I encourage you to do that. What we do is we pray in the new year. It lays the foundation and gets your mind set on intentions for 2023. So you're welcome to come out to the New Year's Eve prayer service at 10 o'clock, and then also on Christmas Eve, if you haven't been to a candle lighting service, we do two of those on Christmas Eve, one at 5 o'clock, and then one at 6.30, those are really special too, you're invited to, to come out to those. So um, we're going to honor God by giving, that's one of the things that we do in this church. Stacy and I have set a pattern of tithing as an outward expression for us of just continual trust every week it's kind of a reset where we get to choose be intentional and trust God and it's it's a works we have faith but this is a works so faith without works is dead so you know you you can rely on God he is faithful Holly sang 
um, your confidence or our confidence is your faithfulness. Because God's faithful, we can have the confidence to not overthink or overanalyze or try to find the solution ourselves. You know, Stacy and I, we're believing sir, for some really big things, but we don't have it all figured out, but we know that we can trust God. And that's kind of where you have to inevitably land. Even if you're super cerebral and intelligent, you're not gonna get to the conclusion of a matter. You're, you're gonna fall short. So, and that's ultimately faith. You know, God, he gave you a brain and he gave you the capacity to earn, build wealth and understand things. But as far as your human comprehension goes, you're always gonna fall short. So this giving is an outward expression of faith. We do the best that we can and we trust God with those things that we can't control. So I encourage you to give in the offering if you're not a tither. Uh, step into that. The Bible also says that God provides seed for the sower. And on Friday night, I tried to articulate that everything in life is a seed and that you can expect fruit from the seeds that you sow. So we're going to plant some seed in the offering and trust God for it. If you want to be a part of that, I encourage you to do it. So with that, God, we honor you with our giving. We trust you and we thank you that you're faithful. We thank you that we're not spinning our wheels and that this is real. We thank you that all of our provision comes from you. Every good and perfect thing comes from you, God. We look to you as our provider, and we thank you. And God, prepare our hearts for the sermon, for the word that you're going to give to us through Paul Chase. We pray that you speak to him. We ask the Holy Spirit to connect the dots between what he says and what you have for us. And we trust you, God. We give you this day and we lean in to the things that are from you and we set our intentions on you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. our guest speaker back by popular demand, my friend for over 40 years, Pastor Paul Chase. Paul and his wife, Shadi, 
have pioneered some amazing ministry all around the world, uh, primarily serving in the Philippines, uh, as I said, for decades. Uh, I am grateful to have their friendship, uh, just generally as terrific voices in the, in, the, in the world with the gospel and powerful leadership, but behind the scenes, I'm just grateful to get to call them friends. And um, a friend sticks closer than a brother, it says in Proverbs 17, 17. And Pastor Paul really fits into that with me. And I'm grateful uh, for the support, the kindness. I, you know, I love his messages. I have stolen a lot of his outlines. And uh, I just uh, am excited to get to present him to you the whole weekend. Uh, Pastor Paul Chase. Give him a big hand and enjoy your time in church. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to be here. How many of you are here Friday night? I'm doing much better than I am Friday night. For those of you who don't, I, I just flew in from the Philippines just a few days ago. And so Friday night, we were talking about some serious jet lag. And so my wife asked me when I went back to the hotel, how was it? I went, I don't remember. <laughs> but I think it was okay. So, but uh, yeah, I, I uh, got to rest all day yesterday. And, um, you know, it's, it's always good to be here. My wife and I have uh, finished over 42 years of living in Asia. We're in our 43rd year now. And um, Jeff's introduction and your, uh, the way you receive us, it's, it's almost hard to put into words when you've lived, uh, I just turned 68 uh, last month. Yeah, I know I look 40. Uh, <laughs> Friday night, I think I looked 98, but, uh, <laughs> but when you've spent basically more years of your life outside of America than you have in America, and so when you come back into the States and you have these places you can go and you are so well, warmly received and loved, you have no idea how good that feels. And, uh, and so I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for the kindness that, that everybody always shows whenever we come in and the people talk to me, and it's just so good to be here. And so I always endeavor to, to give the best that I have, and, but I always leave bigger. I always leave with an increase. It's another reason I love coming here is because a part of relationship, it's two ways. It's not just giving, it's giving and receiving. And so I'm always increased by the heart of your pastor, and every time I come to, to this place, of course, when I drove in here Friday night, I thought I arrived at Disney World with all the, you know, <laughs> all the lights. In fact, I drove around and took a video of it and sent it back to our church in Manila. I said, hey, man, we got to up our game here. Look at this place. And, uh, but no, I, I love the heart of, of what you carry. Even driving here from the airport. Uh, Joe was sharing with me just the different outreaches and the feeding and, and all that you do. And, and so I'm always increased when I come. So I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for how kind you are everywhere I come. I, no, you know, I don't take that for granted, and it's greatly appreciated. That's why it's just always good to come here. Amen. Well, Christmas is Sunday, so I thought it would be appropriate if I try to tie my message into Christmas. What do you think? That's a good idea, huh? Yeah, nothing like a little pressure. So, uh, well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for our time together today, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit who takes the word, makes it real, passing our ears and going into our hearts and planting seeds that cause things to grow and increase that are alive on the inside of us in the coming days, weeks, months, and years that your word uh, is working in our life. It's building our, our faith. It's creating and strengthening our peace and sustaining our joy. And so we thank you for the wisdom of your word today that touches people's hearts, that we leave here different than we came. We have a deposit from the Spirit of God that causes increase in our life. 
And we thank you for that in advance, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. Good Christmas verse. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Say great joy. Great joy. Which is to all people. In other words, what's happening now is for everybody, and it should bring great joy. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Now, that last part of that last sentence there, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Now, I, of course, we read this every year, and as I go over this, I always wanted to make that a little bit more clear, because as we celebrate Jesus, and, and on earth, peace. Well, the arrival of Jesus on the earth brings the opportunity of peace, but doesn't necessarily mean just because he came, everybody has peace. I mean, just watch the news. <laughs> There's not a lot of peace. You know, uh, never mind the world, just look at your own life. Do you have peace in every area of your life? It's not an automatic thing. And this is, and, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Now, let me read this in the Amplified, the last part of that. Suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, angelic army, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among men with whom he is well pleased. Oh, that makes it sound different. And on earth peace among men among whom he is well pleased. Uh, another translation talks about peace on earth, goodwill, and, and the goodwill of men's hearts towards God. If you want peace, your will needs to be aligned towards God. If, you don't, if your will is not aligned towards God, you won't have peace. Peace is available. Peace is here. Peace is not a circumstance. It's not a situation. The source of peace is a person. And that's what we celebrate on Christmas. The opportunity and the... And the ability to have peace is wrapped up in our celebration of this Savior. Outside of a Savior, there can be no peace. We can have peace. Peace is a gift. Peace is available because of a person. And his name is Jesus. Isaiah 9, 6, which was shared during worship. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. The government, the rule, the reign, the influence will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Of the increase of his government. That's, that is the rule and the reign of the kingdom. You know, when Jesus first came, he says, the kingdom of God comes not with observation. In other words, it's not this natural earthly kingdom that everybody's looking for, that the Jews were looking for. That's why they missed him as a Messiah, because they were expecting this, this, this earthly kingdom to be established and set up. When he was on trial, and he was asked, are you a king? And he says, well, my kingdom is not of this earth. The increase, yeah, leave Isaiah 9, 6 up there. The increase of his government, the rule and his reign on this earth continues to grow and increase. Christianity is the largest religion in the world. 
And it continues to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow because, and, and we're just stepping into the, the, the fringes of great outpouring because the Bible says that the, 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 the husbandman waits for the precious fruit of the earth. Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. You know, the rapture is not the great escape. You know, it, it, God's not, when we, when we get taken out of here, it's not like, oh, thank God, we can finally get out of here. You know, we, we just barely made it out of here. No, 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 no. In fact, when we are taken out, the devil will rejoice. Because the Antichrist can't come while we're here. Because it's the church that with, withholds him. Because the church of Jesus Christ is greater than the Antichrist. He's got nothing on us. Come on now, who do you think we are? We are the body of Christ. So he can't manifest as long as we're here. So when we're gone, he's glad because he can't do what he wants to do because of the rule and the reign and the influence of this body called the church, the kingdom of God. So the rule and the reign of his government, the influence, continues to grow and increase and there will be no end. Not only is it increasing in the world, it should be increasing in our life. The longer you've been saved, the greater should be your peace. The older you get, you should have more peace, not less. And of course, there's a challenge in that because the older you are, the more junk you've been through. Can I get an amen on that one? <laughs> yeah, the, the longer you've been alive, the more pain you've had to walk through. The more opportunities to forgive you've had to walk through and walk in love and trust God. The longer you've been alive, the more hurts and pains and challenges you've had. But peace is greater than pain. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So a demonstration or manifestation or fruit of walking in and belonging to the kingdom is we are the righteousness of God, right standing before God, and because of that, we have peace and we have joy. I mean, we, we should be so filled with peace and joy that when we get around people, they almost think we're high. You got this goofy-looking grin on your face because it's going to be okay. Yeah, but things are looking bad. That's okay. See, my peace and my joy is not dependent. Listen, we just came out of two years of just a lot of junk with this pandemic. A lot of challenges. But what, when we get it, see, the world needs to find a group of people that don't just preach and talk it out, but they walk it out. You know, if you see an apple tree bearing apples, you don't have to ask what kind of a tree it is. And I've had friends come to the Philippines and we're driving through and they see all these different kind of, these, all these trees that are just everywhere when we lived in the islands. And, and they go, man, what kind of, man, these trees are everywhere. What kind of trees are those? And I'm going, oh, those are banana trees. You know, I mean, you don't have banana trees in Missouri. So unless you've been into the south or somewhere else, some of you have no idea what a banana tree looks like. You know, last, the, only, the only place you see a banana is in the grocery store. But even though you've never seen a banana tree, if it's got bananas hanging from it, it's kind of obvious. Yeah. See, Christians, we need to bear fruit, not just advertise. See, because the greatest advertisement of what's genuine is fruit. And that's what we need. What's the greatest fruit we can bear? Well, peace and joy. Because in the middle of pain, in the middle of problems, in the middle of sorrow, in the middle of chaos, in the middle of confusion... In the middle of lost elections, or whatever, you know, I, I, you know, I like that too. The government will be upon his shoulders. My peace and joy is not dependent upon who gets elected or who won or who lost. Now, you can be more or less happy, but there's a difference between happy and joy. Don't confuse the two. You need to maintain your joy even when you're not happy. Let your joy overcome your unhappy. Amen. So I want to go through some verses in John that just go from John 14, John 15, John 16, 
that have blessed my life, and they all relate to Christmas because it's all about Jesus. John 14, 27. Jesus is talking. This is in the Amplified. He says, my peace I leave with you. My perfect peace I give to you. I like that. It's a gift. It's not earned. It's not earned. It's not deserved. It's a gift. Peace is a gift. And it comes with him. My peace I leave with you. My perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. So don't let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. What brings you calm and strength and courage when you're in a challenge? Peace. What keeps you stable? Peace. What keeps you consistent? Peace. What stops you from yelling and screaming and cursing and going into that self that that out of control mode? Peace. Now, while I'm sharing this message today, please do not look at the person to the left or to the right. No elbowing your husband or your wife. Just pretend that everything's okay. They know who the Holy Ghost is talking to. He's talking to you. <laughs> God, speak to my husband. He is, but he wants you to listen also. God, please talk to my wife. This is for her. Yes, it probably is, but he's also talking to you. <laughs> Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. See, a lack of peace brings trouble and fear and worry and anxiety. That's why people are on, that's why people are so medicated. You got to have pills to go to sleep and pills to get up, or that's why people drink too much. Why? Because we, we got to have something that's going to help us deal with the anxiety and the trouble and the fear that we deal with. No, you know what deals with it? Peace. Peace. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance. Say that with me. Say every circumstance. In every circumstance and give you courage. Courage and strength. Courage, the, the ability to continue, to not give up, to not quit, to not realize it's not in your own strength. It's in his ability. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. One of the greatest strengths that you and I are to carry in life is peace. Peace. It causes us not to give up. It causes us not to quit. It causes us not to revert to the flesh. It causes us to continue to live out of our spirit and not go back into our mentality or live out of our soulish realm. Peace causes you to listen to the Holy Ghost and not just respond emotionally. Your emotions and your imaginations can be one of your greatest enemies. Peace brings emotion under control. Let your emotion be these seasonings of life that cause you to enjoy so much but not control you to where it confuses you. And your imagination is to give you the ability to see things on the inside of what God has for you and wants you to do. It's the blueprint that he will show you so you can walk it out on the outside. But it should work for you. It should never work against you. And if it's working against you, then the Bible says cast down, bring down every vain imagination. What is an imagination? It's an inward image that's working against you. It's not blessing you. It's not benefiting you. It's robbing your peace and your joy, which is stealing your strength and your courage. It's causing you to hesitate or it's causing you to back up, not to progress. You move forward when you have peace. You move forward when you have courage. You continue to be a giver when you have peace. You stop when you lose it. 
John 15, 7 through 11, also in the Amplified. If you, and, and, and I like it, I use the Amplified because it says some things a little different here than just the King James. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, and then italics it says, that is if we are vitally unit, united and my message lives in your heart. See, this is, this is what Joe was talking about. You know, take something home today. A lot of times we can come to church and we enjoy the message and it feels good. It's just, it's comforting. Oh, yeah, I need that. But let, let the word, find some verses, find some phrases, grab a hold of them and plant them. So when you leave, it's still alive and it's growing and it continues to get bigger and bigger. As many times you can meet somebody later on, say in the restaurant later on and, hey, we're in church today. Oh, no, I'm I wasn't able to make it. Oh, should have been there. Pastor Paul was there. Man, what a great message. Oh, really? Yeah. What was it? Um, uh, you know, I don't know, but it was really good. <laughs> See, you, you can get this ministry. You can get a comfort. You can get a touch. You can have some things lifted while here, but we need things planted for out there. You come into a corporate anointing and environment where you are ministered to, and there's peace, there's strength. But when you go out there and you don't have the worship team and you don't have the, the corporate faith of everybody around you and now it's your faith, it's what's alive in your heart that's going to sustain you. So that's why he, he's saying, where am I here? If you are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish. It will be done for you. Well, that ought to bring you some peace. That ought to bring you some joy. My Father is glorified and honored when you bear much fruit and prove yourself to be my true disciple. I have loved you just as my Father has loved me. Hello. I have loved you just as my Father has loved me. Well, let that get on the inside of you. Listen to what Jesus is saying. Now, now just keep that up there. There's a part in John 17. I'm not going to go there. Uh, I'm not going to look it up. But where Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's praying. And one of the parts of his prayer, when he says, Father, I pray that, that they would know that you love them as you love me. Now, if you could get that established in your heart, that would give you a peace and a confidence that the world couldn't take from you when you realize that the Father loves you as he loves Jesus. That's what Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane when all of this pressure of, of, that's upon him, he's getting ready to go to the cross. He prays and he has sweat come out uh, like blood. And one of the things that he says that's valuable and important is, Father, I want them to know that you love them the way you love me. Do you realize if you could just capture that one verse, it would totally change your life? That you know that God is for you, that he's not against you, that he's really with you, that he loves you? Yeah, but you, you just don't know the things that I've been doing lately. Okay, there are, there's a difference between coming up short, but, but first of all, tell me, what is it that you get from God that you really deserve anyway? You know, I, really, I need a miracle, but I just really don't deserve it. Okay, did you deserve Jesus? No. We didn't get Jesus because we deserved him. We were lost in our trespasses and our sin when we were still sinners. He died for us. He loves you. And if you can get a hold of that, and, and too many times we've allowed the pain of people and circumstance to pervert our view or picture of what love is. 
And if by any chance you didn't have a good father and you didn't have that example in your life of a good father, a good mother, a good family, so, so this, this secure, wonderful, loving relationship of a father loving a son or, or a daughter, maybe you didn't have that in life, and many people didn't. But if you can understand how loved you are, you would begin to live at a higher level in life than you've ever dreamed of. You would have a peace, you would have a confidence, you would have a joy that the world could not take from you. This is why Jesus came. Why did he come? Why are we celebrating Christmas? For God so loved the world that he gave. What is Christmas all about? The reception, the coming of the giving. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. Why? Because he loved us. And he came to redeem us. He came to reconcile us. He came to make us whole, spirit, soul, and body. I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love and do not doubt my love for you. Don't doubt it. And many times we doubt the love of God because things go wrong. And when things go wrong, we think, well, you know, maybe he's a little irritated because if he really cared, this wouldn't be happening. It's kind of like the disciples crossing the Sea of Galilee. They're going to the other side, they're in the boat. Jesus is asleep in the boat. A storm comes. The wind is blowing, the waves are beating against the boat, water's coming to the boat. What's Jesus doing? <laughs> Brother's out, he's asleep. They're freaking out. So what do they do? They go wake him up. And what do they say? They sound like one of our prayers. Lord, don't you care? <laughs> Anybody ever pray a prayer like that? Three, two honest people, three, okay. <laughs> Lord, don't you care, we're going to die. Here's the one who came to die on the cross for them, and they're wondering, does he care about their life? Lord, don't you care, we're going to die. Because it looks like and it feels like this is it. And if you really cared, we wouldn't be in this situation. I wouldn't be freaking, I wouldn't be in fear, I wouldn't be on the verge of some disaster because if you really cared, you wouldn't let this happen. So the waves and the wind were greater than the reality of who was in the boat with them. And how many times have you and I been in a situation where the size of the waves and the strength of the wind was more real to us than the person who's in our boat with us? And so we pray that kind of prayer. Lord, don't you care? Don't you see? Hello, heaven, are you blind to what's going on down here? I'm in pain, I got problems, I got needs, and we're in the middle of this freak out, and we're wondering, does God care? Well, we have forgotten so much of everything that he said. I mean, Jesus, when he was talking to disciples, he said, let us go to the other side. He didn't say, guys, Great idea. Let's go halfway and drown. I know Peter, he's always ready to say something. He goes, you know, I think I'm going to stay here. You guys go have a good time. Uh, I'm I'm going to not this trip. He He didn't say, hey, let's go halfway, swim the rest. No, what did he say? Let us go where? How many know that on a journey to where we need to go, sometimes we got some wind, sometimes we got some wet? But who's with us? So what does he do? He gets up and he speaks peace to the storm. It's nice if he speaks peace to your storm and it always stops. But, you know, and later on in the book of Acts, the apostle Paul was in a storm for two and a half weeks. He didn't stand up and, and rebuke it. But after almost two weeks of no food, two weeks of no eating. Of course, when I preached this in the Philippines, I said, you know, that's why we know there's no Filipinos on that boat, because there's no way a Filipino is going to go two weeks without no food. (laughs) 
He stands up and he says, he talks to everybody on the boat. He said, I want everyone to take heart, for there stood by me an angel of the Lord to whom I belong and to whom I serve. And I believe that it will be even as he told me. See, sometimes in the middle of a storm, you need to believe that it will be as he has told you. Because we're going to have storms. We, we live in, in everyday life, and there is no, there's no life without pain. Do not doubt my love for you. If you keep my commandments and obey my teachings, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and I remain in his love, I have told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. Joy. Full, complete, and overflowing. Listen, peace and joy go together. I mean, if there's anything that you usually see in Christmas decorations, you'll see peace and you'll see joy. Right? So your peace and your joy will be made complete. Full, complete, and overflowing. How many of you want some full, complete, and overflowing joy? This is what he said he came to give you. So if you've lost it somewhere, find out where you lost it and let's deal with it. John 16. I love this verse. This verse has saved my life. Well, many of them have. John 16, 33, an amplified classic. I have told you these things. So that in me, say in me, not in the world, not in your husband, not in your wife, not in your kids, not in your job, not in who's been elected office, not in the government. In me, you have peace. I've told you these things so that in me you will have perfect peace and confidence. When you lose your peace, you lose your confidence. You lose your trust. Trust is foundational to peace. Proverbs 3, 5, another verse that's very, saved my life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. Why? Because when you're rationally trying to figure it all out or why things are the way they are, you get more involved in the questionings and the lack of understanding and, and, and reasoning of your mind is trying to figure it out and trying to have an answer and why is it the way it is and why are they the way they are. You get lost in reasoning. Reason, reason is the voice of the mind. You're not to be led by the voice of your mind. You're to be led by your spirit. And if you're led more by the reasonings of your mind than the leading of your spirit, you're going to stay confused and you're going to lose your peace and you're going to lose your joy. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. So many times in the last 42 years, ministry in Asia and just life, I've been through problems and pains and hurts and, and prayers. Say, Lord, I, I, don't, I don't like what's going on. It doesn't feel good. I don't like it. I don't understand it. I want to know why is this happening. I, I just don't get it. And, and, and I'm in pain and I don't like it. But, but, I trust you. See, I, I can't allow what I don't like, don't want, and don't think it's fair, it's not just, and where did it come from, and why am I going through it, and it doesn't feel good, but I trust you. And that gives me peace because my trust keeps me tied into him. And my trust ties me into his word. So if I'm unified with him and his message is alive in me, then there's a peace which brings my joy, which sustains my strength and my courage to continue, not give up, not quit, not draw back, not throw my hands in the air and say, oh, 
What's the sense of continuing? Because the devil is planning that what you see and what you feel to be more real to you than what you believe. And the thing that's going to sustain you is peace. Peace. And that's why you've got to develop your peace and your joy in little things and natural things and not allow yourself unnecessary habits that you make excuses for. Stop complaining about traffic. <laughs> come to Manila, I'll show you traffic. <laughs> you will come back here and go, glory to God, it's all good. When your pastor was in Manila, he goes, man, we have roads like this in St. Louis, but we don't call them highways. We call them parking lots. He goes, nothing's moving. <laughs> they were taking Jeff to the airport, and his peace got challenged. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know why? Because they left a little late. And the road wasn't moving, which is pretty normal. It's supposed to be, but it's not. Well, what do you do when it's not? Gripe, complain, murmur, cuss, get mad? Don't raise your hand and say, yeah, that's exactly what I... <laughs> or you're going to count it all joy. Count it all joy when you fall into various situations beyond your control. Are you only going to have peace and joy when you can control it? You have to be careful. That's what makes you such a control freak. You know why some people are control freaks? Because it's the only way they can maintain their peace. That's trusting in you. And that's flesh and that's emotion and it'll never work. You're going to stay unhappy and you make the people around you miserable. Do not look at the person next to you. <laughs> Somebody going, are you hearing this? <laughs> I've told you these things. So <laughs> this really is supposed to be somewhat of a Christmas message. <laughs> that in me you have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you will have. Oh, God, why did he say it? You will have. And guess what? If Jesus says you're going to have it, guess what? You're going to have it. You will have tribulation, trials, distress, and frustration. Another translation, threw another one in there. Disappointment. Oh, God. <laughs> Somebody came up to me in church one Sunday. Pastor, would you pray for me? Of course I will. What do you want me to pray for? I want you to pray that, that I'm in a trial right now, and I want you to pray that it comes to an end and, and that, that I never have any of these kind of trials or, or these problems that, that they just stop and I never have them again. Oh, wow, so you want to die. <laughs> so, so you're telling me you want to go to heaven now? No, 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 I, I, I want to live. I said, well, I'm sorry, but there's, there's no place on planet Earth like this. I don't think drugs will even do that to you. I don't know. No, because if you're on planet Earth, there's pain because there's people. He says, you're going to have these things, but be of good cheer. <laughs> yeah, you just said, I'm going to have all these things, but be of good cheer. Take courage. Again, see, it takes courage and strength to continue in peace and joy. Take courage. Be confident, certain, undaunted. Don't draw back. Don't hesitate. Because when you lose your certainty, you lose your courage, you've lost your peace, you've lost your joy, there's a hesitation to live life the way he wants you to. There's a hesitation to continue to obey. There's a hesitation to progress forward, or as Joe was saying, there's a, there's a hesitation to give. Well, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm being challenged financially. Yeah, but the way out of that is to sow because whatever you sow, he'll multiply. Yeah. He gives 
seed to the sower and, and, and bread to the eater. So God will bring things into your life. Eat the bread, sow the seed. Don't eat the seed. Eat the bread. If you eat the seed, you eat your, you eat your future. Some of you are, are right now, you're saying, I, I, you know, I just don't see things happening. That's because you keep eating your future. Where's your future? It's in your belly. God gives you things that, hey, sow it, sow it, sow it, sow it. I'll multiply it. Whatever you release, I'll multiply. Your prosperity is in your hands, not God's. He gives you seed. What's, that, what's in seed? I mean, you take one mango seed. What's inside that seed? A tree. Not a fruit, a tree. A seed produces a tree. That tree produces fruit. All that fruit has seeds in it. And in those seeds are more trees. You can go from, from one seed into the next generation. You have thousands of trees that started with one seed. Only if it got planted. Do you realize that when you go to the restaurant today, every vegetable you eat, every fruit that you eat, or if you happen to like barbecued, grilled, dead animals, like I do. <laughs> you realize that every cow, everything that you and I see or eat or enjoy, whether it be fruit, whether it be vegetables, or it be meat, came from the beginning, because God only created one time. And everything you and I enjoy today is a result of the seed that was in the first creation. It was the next generation, and the next, and the next, and the next. If you're going to have steak or if you're going to have a hamburger today, that hamburger is related to the first cow that was created in Genesis. Because God made cows once and he never made them again. Noah was protecting your barbecue with the ark. God bless him. Amen. Amen. He never made it again. So understand, you want a future? It's in your seed. When you pray, it's a seed. When you love, it's a seed. When you forgive, it's a seed. When you speak life, it's a seed. You're sowing to change your future. If you're going to sow based on the ugly of the past, then you're going to repeat the ugly of the past. If you're going to sow based on you want what you want in the future, you're going to have to sow different seeds. Not bitterness, not anger, not unforgiveness, not pain, but love and mercy and kindness and generosity. Because if you'll sow it, God will grow it. But you're going to only do that when you trust him and you walk in some peace. Tribulation. Well, he says, I've overcome the world and I've deprived it of power to harm you and conquer you. He said, listen, be of good cheer. You're going to go through this, but I've overcome it. And with me and you and my word in you, I'm going to show you how to walk through it. You'll go through it, but you'll overcome it. It won't overcome you, and you'll have peace. So you'll have my peace, because what I'm going to give you, the world can't take away. Tribulation. A cause of trouble or suffering over a period of time. Dealing with challenging circumstances. It's not just a day or so. It's been going on for a while. Of course, we know the Great Tribulation, that's seven years. We'll be gone. But some people have been going through a tribulation in your life. Jesus said these things will happen. You'll have a cause of trouble or suffering. For whatever reason it, it was... Dealing with painful, challenging circumstances. It could be a death in the family. It could be accidents. It, there's a lot of things that can cause it. But the change of the circumstance is not what brings me peace. My peace is in Jesus. Too many times we expect whoever took our peace or whoever created the challenge, we're waiting for them to change so I can get my peace back. My peace isn't dependent on the circumstance changing or that person changing or my wife changing or my husband changing or my kids changing because Jesus said, in me you have peace. 
while you're waiting for this to change, my peace and my joy gives you the courage and the strength to progress while this is still going on. Don't wait for change before you have peace because my peace is based on him. Some of you right there, that can set you free. Stop waiting for that person to change before you get your peace. Your peace is not dependent upon that person. And when my son changes, I'll have peace. No, you better get your peace back in Jesus. Because what happens is when your peace is in him, and your joy is in Him, and your strength and your courage is in Him, then it allows you to see things differently and speak things differently and pray things differently because when you have peace, you love at a higher level. When you have peace, you love at a deeper depth. When you're hurting and wounded and in pain, you're not going to give to the people that are causing you pain. And in their pain, one of the greatest things they may need is to see some peace or to hear words of life or for you just to go to heaven and pray also for them but you're in so much pain you're just trying to take care of your pain and you could care less about their pain but their pain is causing your pain you're going to wait on them to get free before you have peace no 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 Jesus said I told you these things in me in me that's where your peace is at I've been through every kind of circumstance and situation, betrayals, lies, slanders, too much junk. And I thank God that my peace is not in those people. It's in Jesus. A trial, something that tests your quality or your character. Revealing your endurance or patience, your love, your kindness, your wisdom or your courage. A trial will reveal what's in you. Trials don't come to perfect you. They just reveal what's there. The world will bring trials. Well, you know, this this trial is going to make me better. No, no, no. What makes you better is what you do in the trial. See, your obedience to the word is what makes you come out better. If you don't obey the word, you come out bitter. There's a lot of people come out of trials, and they're not better. They're not more happy. They're not more joyful. They came out hurt, wounded, bitter, angry, and critical. Because trials don't come to perfect you. When they come, they just reveal some things. They test. They test your endurance. They test your courage. They test your kindness. They test your love. They test whether you're going to forgive them or you just want to slap them. I mean, let's be honest. How many people have you ever just wanted to just slap? You j- and you even went to God and said, God, I really think just once upside the head would knock some sense into them, and I volunteer for the job. Come on, you ever wanted to do that? You ever just want to ask God for about a five-second timeout? Knowing he'll forgive you? I've done that. And I actually did it. It's my brother-in-law. you got to be careful what you think and what you say. Because if you don't deal with it, eventually you'll do it. And And I did. I I mean, mean, for a couple years, I just thought, I mean, he knew which buttons to push to irritate you. And he'd do it on purpose. I thought, and then he'd quote the Bible while he's doing it. I thought, you know what? Somebody just needs to straighten him out. And one day, Pow! I smacked him right upside the head. It didn't help him, and I, I thought I'd feel better. I felt terrible. So I had to go to my pastor, Pastor Billy Joe. I'll never forget what he said. He gave me two, word, two verses. Be not overcome with evil, overcome evil with good, and the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Never forgot it. Be careful what you continue to think about. Trials. Distress. Jesus said, things that cause you stress, anxiety, sorrow, pain. I mean, look at these jeans. These are new jeans. Now, when I was a teenager, we used to buy jeans and work on them for a month to get them to look like this. 
I mean, you had to scrub and, and then bleach, and then if you used too much bleach, then it ate a hole in the front of your jeans, and your mom will, I just bought those. What did you, why, why is the material disintegrating uh, a little bit too much bleach? Now you buy them this way. What took so long? Or really distress, you pay extra money, and then they come with holes in them. Yeah. Or you can buy furniture that's distressed. Good furniture that you paint to make it look old and worn out. And it's worth more. So if you're feeling a little old and worn out, you're just worth more now. <laughs> uh, but what does life do? It makes us old and worn out. I refuse. I refuse to be old and worn out in distress because that distress, that stress brings pressure and that pressure begins to depress you which leads you into depression. I'm not going to give in to it. Frustration. Feeling of being upset or annoyed. <laughs> Do not look at that person next to you. Because of inability to change or achieve something or change somebody. You want to change somebody? Work on yourself. Frustrations to prevent progress, success, or fulfillment of something. We get frustrated in life. Things didn't happen the way we want because there are some things that are out of our control. But nothing's out of his control. So I'm going to have to trust him. Didn't happen the way I expected. Didn't happen the way I wanted. Or I got disappointed. Somebody didn't do what I thought they should do. They didn't, I have a failed expectation. A sadness because something has happened and it's not been as good or successful, enjoyable or easy as you had hoped. And the danger with disappointment is it begins to steal your hope that things can change or get better. Being disappointed is one thing, but do not walk in disappointment. It steals hope. One of the schemes of the devil is to make you feel like you're a disappointment. You are not. Yeah, but you don't know what I've done. I don't need to know what you've done. I know what Jesus did, and I know that his blood is greater than anything that you've ever done. You are not a disappointment to God. You may do some things that don't make him happy, but you're not a disappointment. God's not putting that on you. Don't put that on your spouse. Don't put that on your kids. Don't put that on your friends. They may have disappointed you. It happens in life. I love my wife more than anybody, but there's times I could have done things better. I know I disappointed her. My kids. Oh. <laughs> have they disappointed me? Oh, dear Jesus, that's another message. But I never have labeled them as a disappointment. I have allowed my love and to, to be spoken into their life, to bring them courage, to help them overcome faults and failures and frustrations and disappointments. If you label somebody as a disappointment, you, you, you put something on them that no matter what they do, they just don't seem to be able to make it back. And you be careful that you don't use disappointment to control others. It's not God. The plan of the enemy is when we're going through all these things that we keep our eyes on people. But the plan of heaven is when we're going through these tribulations and trials and, and frustrations and disappointments is that we keep our eyes on Jesus. Because my peace is not dependent on, 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 on this or them. It's on him. And there has to be a balance of what we're praying for of not just what we want to see God do in other people's lives, but what we want to see him do in our lives. That's why Philippians 4, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Don't allow anxiety to come in any area, but in everything, in everything, with prayer, supplication, specific request. What's a specific request? Take your pain, take your sorrow, take your irritations, take your frustrations, take that trial, take that tribulation, take it, whatever it is. Pour out your complaint before God. Get real, get genuine, slow down. Because if you don't pour it out in a prayer or a supplication, you'll carry it in your head or your emotions, and it'll wear you out and steal your peace and steal your joy. Let your requests be made known unto God. Prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving and 
the peace, the peace, that perfect peace of God that passes all understanding, which means I've got peace, I have a restoration of joy, and I don't know how I could have it or why I could have it because nothing has really changed out here yet, but something has changed in here. And that peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. In other words, emotions come under control. Imagination comes under control to your spirit. And what happens? <sighs> peace. Why? Because of Jesus. Of who he is and what he said. I want to share one verse with you and I'll close. This is... Not really a Christmas verse, but it's my verse I just want to speak over you. My, my, I love this verse. I pray it for myself. I want to speak this over you. Hebrews 13, 20 through 21 in the Amplified Classic. Now, may the God of peace, the source of serenity, and spiritual well-being who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood that sealed and ratified the eternal covenant, equip you, strengthen you, give you whatever you need in any area of life, equip you with every good thing to carry out his will, marriage, your home, your daily walk, your relationships, that he equip you with every good thing to carry out his will and strengthen you, making you complete and perfect as you ought to be, accomplishing in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to him be glory forever and ever and in that let the peace of God rule reign influence be the umpire and the decision maker of your heart in every realm and area of your life that you finish this year with the peace of God, the restored joy of your salvation, because your peace is in Him. It's in Him. Jesus, we thank you for that. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. God bless you. That was really good. Give another hand to Pastor Paul. We appreciate him. We're gonna dismiss in about 60 seconds, but at first I wanna give you guys an opportunity to give. Anytime that we have a guest speaker and somebody comes up here, we show our appreciation. It's a culture thing that we just do every time. If you wanna give, uh, it's gonna go right into him and his ministry. If you were here on Friday night and you heard some of the things that he's attached to over in the Philippines, you probably want to be a part of it so i encourage you if you do want to give we're gonna have the ushers come on up and do that like i said 60 seconds two minutes or whatever and we'll dismiss but um yeah god bless paul chase yeah so also you guys are a really great audience very generous way too generous because that joke that i told didn't make any sense like you're like did you did you get the drum joke? a broken drum so all the uncles, you can share that for next week because I'm an uncle 11 times over now. And those cheesy jokes are like, it's what I, it's what I need. I need that, that <laughs> laugh. One time, um, that's Scott McNew over there. He's a radio personality. He's very funny and witty. And one time he was emceeing our uh, Halloween fall festival uh, party. And this was a long time ago, and I was, my 
my costume was a giant tooth, like a molar, like a tooth. And I, I, I came in second place. And they're going down the line and like interviewing the contestants, you know. And they get to me and I'm playing the, the pun out in my head. I'm like, I, I'm going to be, I knew I'd be number tooth. And I'm thinking, I'm going to nail it. And then they go, and they're like, and, and, you're a, and you're a tooth, so what do you have to say? I'm gl glad to come in tooth place. And I'm like, and he was just smiling, just reveling in like the uncomfortable like moment that I created for myself. Is everybody giving in the offering? God bless you guys. Merry Christmas. We'll see you next week.